Hello everybody and welcome to my build video for the Magicka DK. I think it's the Greymore patch. I'm not going to lie, I've also forgotten what patch it is. But the most recent patch that I'm making this video in. Um, I thought I'd squeeze this out before the end of the patch. I've had this a little while but I've been on holiday for a week and I've been moving house for another week as the background should suggest. So I've been very busy the past two weeks and not been able to make videos. However, I have just about had enough time to finish this build and my Magicka Sort build. So those will both come up in quick succession. Magicka DK. Now, most of this credit goes to a guy called Strepsils on the PCEU server. I tried a number of things to sort out healing, talk to him a little bit. He suggested using one of the sets that I'm now using, and I do like it. I tried another route, which was to just stack hella damage. Like, we were talking 5k spell damage and nearly 40k Magicka. And to be honest, Dragon Blood still was ass tier. So, you really do have to run a set that supplies you some healing, in my view to play solo open world. Now this is completely different to playing group or duels. In duels, just stack the hell out of damage because Magicka DK damage this patch is whack. It is so high. The pressure you can get with the pay to win ring and dots and proc sets is crazy. So one versus one it is really good. In open world play solo, you still have the lack of healing and that's what we've had to solve. So our sets are as follows. Two Groftar, this is our sustain through the combustion passive. Whenever we proc burning, we get this beautiful 500 magic return, no cooldown, which means with a charged Destro, we guarantee a burning proc since Groftar is direct damage. With the Destro passive and charge, that works out to like a 99% or 100% charge. I can't remember the exact number, but basically we proc it every time per person. So this sustains us heavily, which is why our magic recovery is so low. Our second set could be swapped for an alternative if you do not want to farm it and it's a tradable set. But at the moment, I believe the better of the two sets that's viable is overwhelming. And this is gonna give us Magicka, spell damage, spell damage. This large shock thing with a charge star, this guarantees concussion, which is 8% more damage. A very nice proc and it gives us more Magicka return. The alternative to this is in exactly the same position to go for Elfbane, which is gonna increase the duration of fire abilities. Benefits of the Elfbane is that it's going to increase your duration on your dots, which is particularly effective on short durations like Talons and ulties like Magma Shell and Banner. Um, but also it's going to double the duration on your Grofdar because it's at five seconds to that, which means you can use Grofdar for more sustain. Disadvantages of Elfbane, however, is that one bard, it's not totally reliable. And more importantly, we do not get concussion, which is why overall I think that overwhelming is superior. Oh, a final disadvantage to Elfbane also is that being a heavy set and our other set is heavy, we have to run light Grofdar. At the moment, Grofdar is heavy, which I would have gone on to in a sec. Um, that can be a bit of a problem because it means you lose resistances. I think it's like 2% mitigation. It doesn't sound a lot, but it feels a bit of a waste to me. Now, our overwhelming is going to be the sash, the gloves, two of our jewellery, one of our jewellery, I meant one, <laughs> and our front bar inferno staff with a diseased charged glyph. This is going to allow us to guarantee defile on our light attack and it's going to increase the chance of burning and concussion as mentioned before. On the back bar then, we are using Cyrodiil's Crest. We're using six pieces of this to carry the health to the front bar. You could also six the Overwhelming to get the spell damage on the heel, but it's so negligible, the difference, that it's really just not worth bothering. Now, the traits for this are going to be a mixture. I generally run with three Sturdy and four Impen, but run this to your preference. It depends how much you block and whether you're no CP or CP. Next patch, I believe that this uh, impen gets nerfed again, in which case sturdy, you might as well just go for because fuck the impen. But you might also like reinforced on the body, which is great on heavy. Next patch reinforced might be good on every heavy piece, quite honestly, apart from the belt and gloves, but we'll see. But the big trait to make sure we get is a powered on the one handed weapon because this is going to increase the heal on crest and our main heal. Otherwise, I would use Nernhorn because Nernhorn increases the, uh, the damage and our heal but it's not gonna increase the heal of Crest, only Dragon Blood. So overall power is the best trait. And then our shield is gonna be sturdy, of course, because that is our block bar, and that is gonna have a magic glyph just to increase the heal ever so slightly and make our dots a little bit more punishing. So what Chris does, if you did not read that yet, is stamina recovery health health, which is not perfect, but not bad. The health is always good in the current meta. But after successfully blocking heal for 10,500 health, this effect occurs every five seconds. This is so useful, so useful. 11K on that bar, by the way. Because without this, Dragon Blood is not enough. With this, 
Dragon Blood is full health. You block, you pop Dragon Blood, you proc this when somebody hits you, bam. Two heals coming in at the same time for a burst heal. The heal is super good. And then we can use our skills to get ourselves set up. Finally, we are using, of course, the pay to win ring because the damage on this is fucked and it's just a crime not to use it. If you don't have it, you can avoid it. Um, I probably just go 5-5-2 five, five, then. So you could use like two willpower, two potentate, whatever you prefer. But if you can get it, I do suggest getting it. It's overpowered as hell. All of our glyphs are going to be infused, reduced cost. But you could run up to two arcane reduced cost or two infused reduced cost and one arcane spell damage. Those would be viable. I use misform a lot and I'm generally fighting big groups. I like to have my misform completely free and so I like to stack reduced cost at the moment. But it's up to you. In the end, our damage is still in a decent place as it is. It's more than enough but adjust it to your preference. It's not the end of the world if you do wish to change that. Okay, so our skills are as follows. We are using Embers on the front bar, Whip on the front bar, Elemental Drain on the front bar for the penetration and sustain. Embers is our heal, Whip is our main spamble. You do want the heal morph of Whip. I think the other morph is overrated as hell in PvP. Yes, it hits harder, but extra healing is too good when you're playing alone in open world, and I think you do want to take this. If you decide to take the other, you're simply going to swap uh, your entropy, which is our last skill on the front bar, for a flame dot that's on the back bar, so engulfing flames. And that way we've got three and we can proc it. But it's not perfect by any means. I strongly recommend this for solo open world. Last but not least is Fossilize for our CC and a root. Pretty good skill, gives us everything we need and gives us a source for all of our urban heart passives, a lot of which are very good. Leap is our main ultimate. This is pretty flexible. Um, my back bar ultimate is as it is, it won't change. So really front bar comes down to what your preference is. If you prefer Meteor, you could use it. I would advise using Leap over it. But if you do, you could put it on. You are a vampire in this build, which I'll come to in a sec. So you can, if you so wish, use the Vampire, which is still really good. You could also use Banner here, which is particularly nice in group play. I would say most times in group play, I would use it. I was meant to today and completely forgot to slot it, but shh, don't tell anybody. Essentially run the ult that you prefer on the front bar. If you go Elf Bane, you could even run the Destra ult here. Um, it's not too bad at all. But yeah, use what suits you down to the fight preference. Pick one DK ult or one ult that benefits DK. Because on the back bar, we're using the one hand shield ult, which I really like with Crest. It works very nicely. And I also think the mitigation we get from this now that we're stacking less blocks of steam. What is going on behind me? is very very handy um so i do recommend taking this if you don't want to take that i would run banner on your back bar and then a burst ulti on your front bar you could also use vamp on the back bar or the front bar in both cases our other skills then are misform this is going to be for mobility and survivability and with the reduced cost as in my magic templar build we get this cost extremely low which means it's very very sustainable it's a profitable skill to pl play Whenever we're in there, we're gaining Magicka from our overwhelming, our burning procs, and our heavy armor passives. So this is very, very helpful, and the mitigation from this is super good for moving. Now that it's so cheap, one of my favorite skills. In the past, hated it, but now it's great. Dragon Blood, sadly, as bad a heal as this is, you still kind of have to use it, because without it, you don't have enough. You can't rely on just cauterize, so it's got to be there. But next patch, it gets buff, and hopefully that will help things a little bit. Long overdue, by the way. Number five is Volatile Armor. This is going to give us our resistance and very nice damage against direct damage abilities. And then we're using Engulfing Flames to buff the damage of all of our flame abilities, including Grofdar, Whip, Embers, and in this case, I'm using Talons. But this slot is completely flexible. You could use any skill of your preference here. Top picks then are going to be Flames of Oblivion on the back bar, not Quarterize. The heal is not good enough anymore. A nice benefit about putting this on your back bar is it increases the heal on your dragon blood when you uh, sorry increase the heal increases your chance of critting the dragon blood heal. It obviously won't crit our damage because of Malakaf, so you want it on your back bar if anywhere. Other choices you could put wings, very nice defensive skill, particularly cheap with a reduced cost, and also passively offensively with the returning damage morph since we're using misform for the snare. You could use Race Against Time if you want Acceleration. You could use Fragmented Shield for heals. You could use Sinister Storm for another hot in group. Make sure you put that after a pot so it's free though. 
uh, because of CP passives. There's a lot of options. Essentially pick what suits you here. Now in terms of the layout of your skill bar, the only skills that have to stay where they are are Whip, Elemental Drain, in my view Degeneration should be Front Bar, and then Mist, Dragon Blood, Volatile. You could put Engulfing Flames, Talons, Embers, and Fossilize on whichever bar you like. Personally, I like to have my AoE on the back bar so that if I'm in a two or three man group, I am able to pressure with a solid defense set up a little bit and then look for the window to open my whip on the weaker bar, which is the flame staff, because obviously we're a lot squishier there. Um, or when solo, I quite often like fossilize on the back bar. And the reason for that is when kiting a large group, I've got quick access on my defensive bar to place these. Now, I know a lot of people don't like putting fossilize and talons on their back bar because they find it uncomfortable, the whip. All you're going to do is when you cast it, weapon swap at the same time. So if I show you that quickly, we do that, which means there's no delay on getting the whip off after the CC. I've played it a long way like this, so I am more used to it, but it's worth doing. I think that's it for that. So let's go on to our stats quickly. We are 35.6k Magicka. This is 36 to 37k if we run a Magic Lift on this body. And if you play CP only, you can definitely do that. Um, otherwise, I would run slightly differently, I would say. Um, I would run three Triglyphs. 30k health, 16.7k stamina. The recovery is irrelevant because we're sustaining through our sets and 1.9k unbuffed spell damage. The resistances are heavy armor, so we have a nice chunk on the back bar with 24k physical and 28k spell resist. And we are a high elf using the mage and triglyphs. My vamp state, sorry, using the mage, high elf, and tri food. That's what I meant, the gold tri food. Our vamp stage is one, you could use three as well. I advise against two, even though you get the spell damage from vamp passives, because at that point you might as well commit to three for the mitigation. Um, I like one for the extra sustained solo. I've kind of fallen with that on my temple art as well, but both of them are pretty good. It really depends on how you prefer to play. They're both viable. In terms of our glyphs quickly, we are running triglyph on the big pieces, magicka on the small pieces like so. Free infused reduced cost, front bar diseased, and the back bar glyph, this could be absolutely anything. I use poison because when I proc that, I get a stamina return from the passives, and it's not terrible damage, and it can put an extra dot on, but anything will go there. It's so rare that you're going to proc this because it's on your one-hand shield bar. Our pots are preferably the essence of magicka, that is magicka, stamina, and minor heroism to increase the rate of your ulti. We're a vampire, so the health regen is less valuable from a tripod, and tripods currently get affected by battle scaling on the heal return, so the heal you get is much lower. Otherwise, you can use ordinary tripods. These are not really any cheaper than these, they're the same price now. So if you can get these, it's worth getting them, but those are gonna give health, stamina, and magicka instead. What else am I missing apart from CP? I think it's just CP. But knowing me, I've forgotten something, but whatever. In terms of CP, we're going to fire through this nice and quickly because I play this in OCP a lot as well. Yes? Question. All right. Somebody remember this timestamp. Somebody is always going to ask in the video description, does this work in OCP? Timestamp it now. Yes, this works in OCP. They just didn't watch the video. Roast them in the comments. One in Siphon it to make purging our dots a little harder because they have to purge this as well. 72 in Warlord for CC break. Six in Bashing for the interrupt and also sometimes it's nice to bash with you on your dots on the back bar but these days bashing is less valuable since the nerfs to it seven in moon for stamina recovery i mean this is basically a point dump same as 37 in arcanist they don't have much use elsewhere to be quite honest with you the recoveries are so low we don't get much from this so these points are pretty flexible put them where you like if you're heavy attack put them in there you could even put them in health recovery really they could go anywhere 35 in Befoul. Now this is much better because when we are using the Glyph, we're getting a decent Defile. And when we're using Banner, we get a decent Defile. And 35 is the scaling point for that. Put that number in, you'll be good. 40 in Tumbling for dodging. Although we block a lot as a DK, there are situations where you need to dodge and get right out there. So it's worth cheapening up. And of course, a nice cheap block cost at 72. If you do mix these points up, you could even go 81 in there just to make it even cheaper. Blue tree, 49 in blessed for a nice strong heal. You could lower this as low as 37. I didn't really notice the difference on my damage. Like the dots behind Malakath hit so hard anyway. So I thought, why not boost the healing on my sets? 20 in Elfborn. This is solely for the heal crit. Now, I actually am not totally sold on whether these are even worth it. 
at the moment on DK because most of my healing is coming from Crest. So there's a decent chance they'll move out in the future. Very flexible points, those 20, same as this extra 12 in here. 43 in Elemental Expert for the Elemental Damage, 55 in Pen, 72 in Direct Damage, 3 in Staff Expert, and 28 in Thaumaturge. There's a lot you could change here. Adjust it to your preference. I'm likely to change that blue CP as well. As I said, I place a lot in no CP this build, so I haven't really tried hard at this is older CP. 72 in Ironclad, 48 in Resistant. Now this is important because we want to get the reinforced passive. Since we're blocking a lot, it's a nice extra bit of survivability. It does add up in a long fight. In this tree, 40 in Fixed Skin, 43 Hardy, and 37 in Animal Defender. Very standard setup for me. And then lastly, 27 Quick Recovery, 3 in Expert Defender. And this unlocks the Infusion passive just in case you're in a group. And I think I've covered everything, but I'm sure I haven't. So if I did forget something, just let me know in the comments and I'll fire away. Yes, it works in no CP. Um, if you don't have Malakath, just skip it and run two well pack instead and front bar back bar completely. It won't be as good, but it'll do the job. Um, and would you change any of the sets? Just Elf Bane for overwhelming. Now, last thing to mention is that I do think this is the build to go for. There are many builds out there with higher damage. For example, Elfbane, Overwhelming, Grovdar. This is a dueling build. The survivability without Crest open world is not good enough as a solo player. You need to have Crest in my view. I just do not find anything else to make the healing on DK viable. And I've tried a lot of shit. And finally, again, shout out to Strepsils for much of the theory crafting on here. I've changed very, very little since his original setup, apart from maybe the skill bar and my glyphs. So yeah, credit to him for sure. I hope that will be useful, guys. Good luck on your DK and Sork will be coming very soon as well.